Hey everyone, uh, I'm Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio, and welcome to this new little corner of my shop. I'm kind of thinking of it as the hand tool corner. Recently, uh, this month actually, I spent some time and I built this dedicated sharpening station in my shop. It's a cabinet like many other cabinets here in my shop. A little bit different in the sense that it's got a phenolic plywood top. Um, but it has this beautiful sharp sharpening pond on top of it and uh, we're going to be using this today. Now here's my hand tool cabinet and um, you may recognize it. It's out of an article in Fine Woodworking. I just fell in love with it because it was walnut. Um, I have some Stanley Sweetheart chisels, uh, Lee Nielsen planes, uh, Veritas, uh, Lee Valley planes, spoke shays, the whole nine yards. First up, we're going to sharpen a chisel. And you can see here, uh, my chisels are facing in one of two directions. Either the um, handle with the logo is facing inside or outside of the door right now. And the ones that are facing outside the door are sharp and ready to be used. And the ones that are facing inside the door are no longer sharp. And um, again, this is the reason why I wanted to make a dedicated sharpening station so I can easily just come over this corner and sharpen whenever I need to so that more of these chisels would be facing out than facing in. So one of the great things about this dedicated sharpening station is that I have these drawers on the sides and I've went over and pulled out um, a drawer right now and that's my top drawer and it's got all of my stones in it, well, almost all of my stones in it, as well as some other items for um, sh sharpening plain blades and chisels. Um, I have uh, two stone holders here, and I'm going to be using uh, both of them today. They're made out of a quarter saw and white oak, and in case you haven't seen any of the updates before, um, or the videos on the sharpening pond, both the oak, the mahogany, um, inside and out, all of it is covered with or, or finished with five coats of a marine grade varnish. So instead of the water soaking into the wood, it just beads up on top of the wood. To remove a lot of material at once, you can use an 8,000 grit stone, but it would take forever. So here I have an older stone. This is a 220 grit Norton stone. Um, it's one of the only the combination stone 1,220, and it's one of the only Norton stones I have left. I've actually upgraded recently um, to these Oishi stones, and they're sold by Lee Nielsen. But for now, this 220 Norton is going to do just fine. And it'll also demonstrate another thing for us, which is that we need to flatten our stones from time to time. So what I'm going to do right now is take a sharpie and uh, make a check or pattern on this. Get that into one of the stone holders and we'll start working on getting it nice and flat. Okay, so now I have a checkered pattern on my 220 grit stone here. And um, I've already got water in the pond. I'm going to turn the pond on. And um, the next thing I have them pull out of my little drawer here is this is a diamond flat flattening st um, plate. And uh, I'm gonna, it's got a little bit of residue on it. I'm going to get it into the pond. See if I can get some of this off. And now this diamond plate, I'm going to start flattening this stone here. And uh, what you can immediately tell is that I'm flattening parts of the stone uh, with the diamond plate, but other parts of the stone are not getting cut at all. I got a nice little slurry going here. So this nice slurry going, I'm going to shut the water off because it should be enough to keep going. And I'm going to start working on flattening the rest of the stone. We have a little bit of a hollow in the center, so I'm just going to keep working. All right, I think we're pretty much flat now. That's what it looks like. I'm going to turn the uh, pump back up a little bit. Now, it's really important to have flat stones because um, we want flat tools. So what we're going to do is flatten the back of this chisel and then we're going to grind a new bevel on the front and then hone it. 
So here's the back of the chisel, and um, you can see it's got some shiny spots, some not so shiny, shiny spots. It's got the mill marks from um, when it was actually made. So this guy needs some work. Um, I got the water running just a little bit here, and this is to get the stone re-wet, and then I'm gonna shut it off. And we're gonna start by um, taking the chisel and just start working on the first you know, three quarters of an inch or so. And um, you can see that I'm starting to remove some material and you can see where I'm not removing material. So I'm gonna keep do doing this, but I'm gonna go deeper now. All right, that looks really good. We have nice consistent results across this length of the back of the blade. We don't need to go all the way to the bottom because we're most likely never gonna reference here. We're gonna pretty much only reference from the front and then we wanna be able to make sure the cut stays uh, referenced against the part of the cut on top as it goes deeper. So let's switch over to the 1000 grit stone now. So these stones don't need a lot of water, um, just enough to get them a little soaked. And uh, that should be enough. I'm going to shut down the, the fountain and uh, let's start with the same thing we did before with our chisel. What's nice about this method is you are using the entire length of the sharpening stone. You're not just diving in the one section. You're going up all the way, come back, and then go all the way back up again. And by using the entire length of the stone, um, you are helping to keep the entire stone flat. So the back of the blade looks pretty well worked all across its length that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna take the 1,000 grit stone and I'm just gonna set it aside for right now. And just like before, I'm gonna turn the fountain on a little bit so we get some water going here just to coat the stone. That should be more than enough. The harder the stone is, the less water it needs. And I'm gonna do the same thing now with the 3000 grit stone. So we're real shiny up here in the top. We're shining the back. We're low. We're not so shiny right here, which means that metal is lower than these two. And uh, we're pretty shiny up on top as well. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna worry about this little bit of a low spot here. As long as I'm good for about this first inch or so, that's all I really care about. Most of the time you're only referencing about this part of the chisel and really just this first part of the chisel. So with that in mind, I'm gonna switch over to an 8,000 grit stone. And um, we don't even necessarily need to turn the fountain on for this one. We can just grab some water from inside and coat the stone. Hopefully you can see we got a nice shiny portion all the way down to here. And again, there's that little spot there that um, just isn't the same as everything else. But again, this little section here, the chisel, hopefully you can see it, is all that matters to me. Okay, now it's time to grind a new bevel on this chisel. I have the chisel in my Veritas uh, Mark II uh, honing guide, and I set it for a 25 degree angle, and I'm on the number two here, and I also have the little um, pointer here pointing up. When you take it and you point it down, you change the angle by about two degrees. And that's what we're gonna actually hone at, but we'll do that after we grind a new bevel. So um, once this guy is locked in and it's nice and square to this piece here, I can take that off. And uh, we're just gonna start to remove some material. Now you can see here that it is pretty shiny, which means there's a, a good bevel here at the end. Um, but it actually is dented in a couple spots. It's, it's really hard to tell, but there's a little chip at the end over here. Try to put even amounts of pressure as you hold it on both sides. 
trying to use all of the stone. I'm taking my stone and my uh, honing jig and I'm moving around as much of the stone as possible. So I get a nice even wear on my stone. So now that I've removed any trace of that little um, dent or remove or missing metal in this section of the chisel and I've ground a brand new bevel to 25 degrees I'm going to take the 220 and swap its position for the 1000 grit stone and with the 1000 grit stone I'm going to continue to make cuts until I get a nice consistent shine and uh, just after a few strokes we're already there really nice so I'm going to switch over to the 3000 then the 8000 yeah, that's very nice got a nice mirror finish there um, the water is still evaporating a little bit but it's there so what I'm going to do now is switch the honing guide from the up position with this little notch here and down and what that's going to do is going to lift change the angle by a couple of degrees and it's going to allow me to put that secondary bevel on and that's it I did eight quick strokes and that secondary bevel is on there right now and then just lap the back of the blade on the 8000 grit stone to remove the burr that was created by doing all the work on the bevel and um, there's one more thing to do got a little Camilla oil here this is from uh, Lee Nielsen and I'm just going to spray it onto the chisel and uh, just kind of spread that in and this will now protect the chisel from rusting so now the question is just how sharp is this chisel yeah I'm taking shavings off the end grain this is great so now what you can do is do exactly what I'm going to do, which is go over to your chisel rack and turn this thing around and have it facing you because now that chisel is ready to go. So I was really contemplating which plane to use and I decided on the one I use the most, which uh, beyond my block plane that is, which is my number four here, my smoothing plane. So I have the plane blade from my number four in here and it's a... Uh, two inch wide blade and the back is um, flat and the roller trick's been done on it it's got a nice little flat part in the front and I'm not going to worry about that but what I am going to focus on is just the edge here now I have a little bit of a secondary bevel up here and um, you can see I had a little bit of a boo-boo back here at one time where I put in the um, blade into the honing jig at the wrong point but the nice thing is it didn't screw up the front just a little bit in the back here and I'm not worried about that at all I'm gonna keep the secondary bevel so I'm gonna make sure that my uh, honing jig from, is in the secondary bevel position this protrusion for the blade is set at 25 degrees and I'm just going to make a couple of strokes and I'm going to do what um, Rob Cosman tells you to do when he teaches about sharpening which is if you want to put a camber on this blade without using a camber jig I happen to have the camber roller for the Veritas Mark II but let's forget that I do and then what you want to do is apply a little bit extra pressure on the right side and a little extra pressure on the left side for a few strokes so first we'll start with even pressure and even strokes so I took 10 strokes which is probably way too much because I wasn't thinking and uh, now what I want to do is take a couple strokes with pressure on the left side more pressure that's three three on the right three on the left three on the right I'm done and uh, hopefully what that does is it kind of gives a little bit of a curvature to the blade and that helps when you are actually using the plane and you are surface planing for your final pass 
Okay, after making those passes, I'm gonna just get rid of the burr on the front of the blade. I'm gonna dry the blade off and put a little Camilla oil on the blade to help prevent it from rusting over. I reinstalled the blade back into my number four bronze smoother, and um, now what we're gonna do is slowly project the blade out until I start taking shavings on this piece of cherry here. That's the same cherry I used before. I'm turning the knob with my right my finger to project the blade out. So there we go, there's a full width shaving right away. And that, that's at a thousandth of an inch. So I really think the results speak for themselves. I mean, being able to take shavings off of end grain in cherry um, to the little touch up I did to my um, blade for my number four, and then being able to take a thousandth of an inch shavings on that same piece of cherry is just really awesome. So if you're interested in the sharpening pond, um, take a look at the project preview um, video. I have a link for that right here. And um, this is just really cool. I've been wanting to have this guy in the shop um, for a very long time, or just a whole dedicated sharpening area. So I, I just can't be um, any happier. Um, obviously you can tell it's dark now, but normally I'd be able to see out the window if it was during the day and take a look at the pomegranate tree. Um, and it's just a nice serene place to do some sharpening. So if you have any questions or comments, um, please add them in the, in the comments for the video. And I'll have links to uh, where you can get the stones, the pond, um, and all that fun stuff, the um, pump as well for the pond. So as always, I really appreciate you guys. So if you can, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, um, share the channel with your friends, the video, and um, until next time, hope you guys have a great week in the shop.